and we miss the very things that you asked us to do. So God, I pray that I will be obedient to that. Just like Solomon prayed, God, I pray that you give us understanding, an understanding, obedient, and discerning heart. touch of God and what God really wants to do in our life. And uh, I want you to think from the standpoint, so we look at the Old Testament a lot of times, so that's the Old Covenant, that's the Old Testament. Uh, Y'all be here um, at 5 o'clock this afternoon, be Brad's third study, third uh, week, if you will, on the Blood Covenant, and uh, how he be began in the very beginning of the Bible and then taken it through. And... Uh, be here and, and catch that and watch what's going on with that. But I want you to think this morning um, about this blessing of God, about what it is. And I want to try to set up a, a foundation for you because I think that's significant in our foundational beliefs, the understanding that God wants to touch our life. God wants to influence your life. He wants to influence my life. Um, these beliefs make us who we are. Uh, how, we, how we live each and every day of our life depends on our foundational beliefs. What we think, what we, what we uh, rehearse in life, what we study, uh, all of that comes into play. And the Old Testament just fast forwards into the New Testament. The principles don't change. The principles of God are everlasting. God doesn't wake up today and so I think I'm going to change my mind about the principle of yesterday. No. It's the same. And, and so he expects the same thing from you and I. So I want you to take a look at it this morning. Uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 1 and 2. I'm going to give you several other scriptures. They're in your worship guide. I think most of them are anyway. Uh, if you don't get something, if you'll text me or email the office or call the office, I'll get it for you. Um, verse 1, it says, and again, he's talking to the children of Israel. Moses is leading them. Um, and, and it's important that you take a look and, and just think about what God is saying. He says in verse 1 of chapter 28, he said, if you fully obey, if you fully obey the Lord your God and carefully follow His commands, the ones that I give you today, the Lord your God will set you high above all the nations on earth. All these blessings will come upon you and accompany you and here it is again, if you obey the Lord. The thing is, is so many times we look at God, we'll, we'll, God is a God of grace, no doubt about that, but God is a God of conditions. And to get the blessings of God, then there's conditions upon my life and your life. Like it or not, that's not the pastor's uh, uh, commands or rules or whatever you want to call it. It's not dogmatic on the pastor's part. It's dogmatic on God's part. If we want the blessings of God, then they're conditional upon our attitude, upon our actions. Charlie Scholars put something on Facebook last night. He said uh, something to the effect, if you want the blessings of God, you need to watch your mouth. Uh, and he had another little understatement right there. And I, I messaged him back this morning, and I said, Charlie, good word, and I told him about the book, because the blessings of God are conditional upon our life. Why does God bless you? Why does He bless me? He blesses us in order that we might bless others, right? If, if we tend to hoard the blessing, then God will cut His blessings off till we get it right. God, we leave God at our last point of disobedience. Somebody was talking this morning in the office and they said, you know, you said it over and over again, God will not bless our disobedience. Principle of God. And you and I need to ingrain that in our mind. God will not. He cannot, because he would violate who he is. He cannot bless our disobedience. Okay? Let's go to the Lord. Father, I pray this morning, God, for just an overwhelming presence of God. God, in the midst of life, in the midst of crises, in the midst of a lot of stuff where we're burdened down, 
I pray, I pray, I pray as children of God that, Lord, we realize that you want to bless us, that you want to touch us, even when we don't understand it. God, even, even when we don't get it, even when we're tired of waiting, God, that we pray expecting, believing, watching. God, you tell us. God, you tell us that you want to bless us, that you want to do things in our life that's so far above us that we can't even begin to comprehend it. So, God, I pray we grasp that this morning. We grasp it in Jesus' name. Amen. In the book, Dr. Batterson talks about, and he uses an illustration that I really like. He kind of compares it to an umbrella, and he calls it, God's umbrella blessing. And when you think about it, the umbrella, how important it is for us when we think about the purpose of this umbrella, okay? Uh, an umbrella comes in handy when we face the kind of weather that we face here in recent days. It's going to have tomorrow, right? Uh, when you think about the umbrella, uh, it's there for the protection against the rain or sun, right? And, and so we have that umbrella but I dare say that most men in this place don't use umbrellas. How many men run to get the umbrella? Nope. We got a few that are with and hit it. The rest of them are either lying or just say, I'm a sissy, I don't want to do it. I want to be a man, right? That's right. Uh, so I'm not gonna I'm not gonna do that. You know, here's the deal. 250 years ago, nobody used an umbrella except women. It was a woman's thing to have an umbrella. And, and, you know, it, it's uh, the suitability of it, okay? But it was a manly thing, and still today, a manly thing not to use those umbrellas. Anybody got an idea what this is called in its originality? Parasol, something else I'm looking for. Portable roof. That's what it was originally called, was a portable roof roof from that standpoint. And so uh, here's the deal. Real men got wet. That's right. And today real men still get wet, right? How many times our wives say, look, you want to use my umbrella? No, no, no. We'll go to the car. We'll get the umbrella to come back and get you, but we're not going to use it, right? Now they got the fancy umbrella, right? And, and I didn't have one. I sure ordered one, but what does it do? Foes from the, out, the, the whatever, backwards. Where you get in the car, you know, as opposed to you pull it down, you know, you don't have to fight it. Everybody, anybody ever try to get in the car and you're trying to pull this thing down, what happens? You get wet. Well, now they got the one that's revert that, that comes down from the inside so you don't get wet. But here's the deal about the umbrella. Does the umbrella change the forecast? No, but it helps you cope, right? It helps you cope in the midst of the forecast. Think about the blessing of God this morning. As you think about that umbrella, you know, you can have this umbrella and it can be storming. And if you do this to the umbrella, which most guys do, we'll, we'll cheat a little bit. We'll get here and then we'll put our life on it and we'll walk out here, right? That's right. What happens? We get ready. Think about God's umbrella blessing. Think about the blessing of God as being an umbrella. If we're under the umbrella, the blessing is happening. But so many times we choose to walk outside the umbrella. The forecast doesn't change. But many times we get wet. And you know, here's the deal. God's blessing doesn't automatically mean it's going to be fair weather. It means that life can be tough. Finances can go awry and things can happen. It means that life hurts. That there's pain, there's agony. Some of our folks have been going through some difficult things. And, and in the weeks of head, ahead, you've got some difficult things in your mind, some disappointments, some hurts in your life. The days are long, the days are tough. I want you to understand it doesn't mean that God's not going to bless you. God's umbrella blessing doesn't make us immune. To the things that happen in our life. Does it make us immune to the difficulties that's going to come? But here's the deal. When we take God in His Word and we believe it, it sure does make a 
days a little bit easier. It sure does take him, and when we're covered with hope, we're covered with expectancy. We can believe and we can trust for tomorrow. When we think about this word blessing in the Old Testament, when we see the word and its roots there, it's the word really brought, but it means to bless the one who blesses you. And the double blessing literally has to do with the fact of when we receive it, we turn around and give it away. And that's how we're blessed. God blesses you and God blesses me and God blesses his church so that we can give it away. God didn't create churches to have million dollar bank accounts. He created churches in order that you and I would do the work of the ministry. He created the church, the body of the Lord Jesus Christ, to go and do. And he challenges you and I to go and do. And somehow or another we've lost that principle. We've taken it and we put it in our bank accounts. We've taken it as individuals and we close it up in our checking accounts. And we close it up and we don't even give to the work of the ministry. And if we don't give to the work of the ministry, how can we expect God to bless us in this, in this life that we live? We've got to get under the umbrella of blessing. This morning in the adult Bible study, I, I don't know exactly where Jim was coming from when he was talking about this morning uh, what he was teaching. I, did, I, I wasn't in that class. But the thing is, the, the adult Bible study was, God. does God really understand our pain and suffering? Does he really? I, somebody's probably asked that question this morning. God, do you really care about me? Do you even hear me, God, where I am? God, I'm in a difficult time in my life. I feel like that I'm just totally surrounded. And God, I want to give up. Do you even care? The answer is, God does care. You betcha. God really cares exactly where I am, where you are. And the truth is, God experienced it when he put Jesus, his son, on the cross. He noticed the pain that we had. And he did it all because of his love for us. And he didn't want us to spend eternity in a place called hell that we talked about last Sunday. It's so significant for us this morning that, that we understand this blessing, that the way we receive the covering of God's blessing is to willingly listen, place ourselves under the leadership of the Lord Jesus Christ. Just like we would choose and willingly Listen to me, men, many times against our will, my will, to get under the umbrella and frame it. Flame will say, hey, you want my umbrella? Nah. Isn't that what we tell God so many times? God says, you want my blessing? No, God, my way's better. I can handle it on my own, God. I got this. You may not have wrote that in your diary this morning, but I guarantee you some of us thought it and we lived it this week. God, I got it. I, I, re I really don't need you, God, today. Maybe tomorrow, God. Maybe tomorrow, God, I'll pick up the umbrella of your blessing and place myself under the Lord Jesus Christ. What if tomorrow doesn't come? What if tomorrow does it come? What are you going to tell God? What are you going to tell him? Man, as we think about this blessing this morning, I want you to think about where you are. I want to walk you back in time as best I can this morning in thinking about this blessing. When God talks about the fact that if we fully obey the Lord your God and carefully, I mean, that means following, that we're concentrating, that we're taking and making sure that we're stepping where God wants us to step. We're not running without any sense of direction. We, we, we've got a course that's planted for us, and we're walking right there. That's what it means, that word carefully there, when he said that you fully obey the Lord and you carefully follow in his commands. And guys and girls this morning, remember, his grace is sufficient, but God still requires obedience. He requires obedience. So think with me, first of all, this morning in the area of God's covering. 
God's covenant. And it goes all the way back. See, there was an original blessing. Do you understand that before the original sin, when Adam and Eve fell, and we'll talk about that in just a moment, but before that original sin, there was an original blessing when he said, be fruitful and multiply. That was the blessing of God. And God intended for you and I to do it his way. And God wants to cover us this morning. When we think about his covering those three circles, you see them in your worship guide, and we put them up on the screen from time to time. That, that area of brokenness, God covers our brokenness. Here's the deal. What we uncover, this is a good word for you. What we uncover, God covers. Think about it. What we uncover, God covers. What we cover, God uncovers. That's why when we confess our sin, it doesn't have any power on us anymore. As long as we hold on to it, this little voice is back there. And if steady, hear that little voice right there? That, that's exactly what's happening when those little voices together. Those little voices start talking to us. And we'll hear those little voices. And, and they'll overpower us. But God wants to cover our brokenness. And when you think about it, how we go all the way back? How did that first blessing be fruitful and multiply? Came the first sin, right? Came, came the area of brokenness. And, and, and you know the story, I would think, but back in the beginning of Genesis, in the beginning of time, Adam and Eve had all the garden, perfect garden. God created everything perfect. And guess the and a believer, we're going to get to see that perfect garden one day. But Adam and Eve had it in a perfect setting. And God told him, said, look, we've got to leave the tree alone in the middle of the garden. It's known as the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And you guys got to leave it alone. But then Satan came, right? And Satan offered the temptation, and, and, and they took from the tree. If you haven't read that, go back and read it at some point, because here's the deal. When they read from the tree, I mean, when they ate from the tree, the Word of God says that their eyes were open. Their eyes were open and, and they realized something that they hadn't realized before. They realized that they were naked. They were embarrassed. The Bible says that they hid themselves. The Bible says that Adam and Eve, listen, they tried to fix it. You might know how they tried to fix it. They did what? They tried the fig leaves, right? Probably the first spandex and the first bikinis, right? The little fig leaves. So y'all thought y'all did that. Adam and Eve did that. But hey, guess what? It didn't work for them. Nudity didn't work for them. God had to come in, right? God came in and God did some stuff. And God came in looking for them, and, and you know, it wasn't good for uh, enough for God. And so he came in looking for them, and he called them, and they hid from them. And they said, look, we hid from them. He said, uh, we're naked. I said, how do you know? Who told you? You know what God needs to do in our life? Just remind us of his sovereignty. And then what did God do? God cursed the serpent, cursed the ground. Because of the sin of man, all of a man was cursed, right? But then what did God do? He made what? Real clothes. See, what they tried to fig leaves didn't work. So he made complete coverings. What did he use for the coverings? Animal skins. What happened to get an animal skin? Animal had to die. First sacrifice. The sacrifice right there when you begin to think about it. The first sacrifice, listen, that would foreshadow the sacrifice of Calvary. That's why you don't want to miss the blessing that Brad's talking about. The blood covenant. You don't want to miss what he's talking about. Because when you begin to take and look at that, the animal died in order God could cover him. The blessing of God. The touch of God. The reality of the presence of God. And you and I can try every way imaginable, but it'll never work. It'll never work. It'll always be insufficient until you give it to God. I don't care how happy you are. I don't care how 
how thrilled you are. I don't care how satisfied you think you are. It's not what God wants for you till you do it God's way. The covering. The covering in the beginning of time with Adam and Eve. Fast forward with me. Exodus chapter 12. God's covering in Egypt. It's a major covering, and when you begin to look at it there, and, and you begin to examine what's taking place there, we know it is the Passover. And the fact of God striking down really the firstborn. But here's what God said. He gave the word to the people, the Israelite people. And he said, look, I want you to go, and I want you to find a lamb. A one-year-old lamb. And this lamb can't have any blemish. This lamb cannot have anything wrong with them. And I want you to kill the lamb. And he gives some specifics. You go and look at it. And he talks about those specifics. And then uh, the killing of the innocent lamb, the innocent blood. And he said, I want you to take that blood and I want you to put it over the door and down the sides of the door. And when I come through, I'll see the blood on the doorpost and I will pass over. Therefore, the firstborn will not die in that house. The Passover is what God did for the children of Israel. The Passover, what Jesus did for us. The Passover, the fact of the freeing from Egypt, the, the freeing of what God set, and it was a sign for the people of the workings of God. And God wants to do the same thing in your life, in my life, in His church. And you and I need to to, to realize what God really wants it. The blood is the only protection we have. The blood of the Lord Jesus Christ for eternity speaking that you and I deserve death and punishment but, but it's because Jesus Christ died, the one and only perfect Lamb, Son of God, died on the cross, on Calvary for my sin and your sin, shed His blood in order that we would be covered. The covering. The other covering just takes off from there, and it's God's covering when we're in Christ. Galatians chapter 3, I, I want you to look at that this morning. It'll be on the screens, but I'd love for you to take and mark it in your copy of God's Word if you don't have it marked. But John, uh, Galatians chapter 3, Paul's writing there, and look what he says. He says, you are all sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Do you understand there that you're not born into the kingdom of God? See what he says there. It's important that you don't miss it. That you're sons of God through faith in Jesus Christ. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. Wow, think about it. Now we just talked about the clothing that God made for Adam and Eve. Clothed them. Because of the sacrifice. But now you and I are clothed as a result of Jesus Christ. And then he says, for, for these folks who are racist, for folks who think God died for America and America alone, for God, for, for God just has his hand upon us because of who we are, hogwash, baloney. Look what he said. The Word of God. When you get up against somebody and they start that jump, take them to the Word of God. Therefore, there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor free, met female. For you, listen, are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you're Abraham's seed. And heirs, listen now, heirs according to, that, that's a big statement, according to the promise. What promise? The promise of God that whosoever would believe in him, they would not perish, but they would have everlasting life. Red, yellow, black, white, green, The key is Jesus Christ. And you and I need to get that in our head. It's not about a denomination. 
Baptists don't make you go to heaven. Methodists don't make you go to heaven. Catholic don't make you go to heaven. Presbyterian don't make you go to heaven. Assembly of God don't make you go to heaven. Jesus Christ. Jesus and Jesus alone. And when we think about the fact of Jesus, I want you to imagine with me for a moment this morning. You're in court. And you're on trial. You're sitting in the seat. I should have put a seat up here and had somebody just come up here. You're in the courtroom. Satan's on one side. Jesus is on the other. God is on the judgment seat. And as you're presenting this morning and the fact that Satan comes against you and everything that you have ever done, he don't even have to lie. Everything that I have done, everything that you have done, everything that you're doing right now, some of you are not even listening. Everything that you're doing is being brought before the courtroom judge. Every little thing, every lie, every thought, every act of disobedience, everything is putting up there an open view before God and everybody. And Satan says he or she is guilty as charged. What are you going to say? Because it's the truth. What are, what are you going to say? Every thought that you had this morning, this morning, is before the court. What are, what are you going to say? What evidence can you give? Nothing. And then Jesus. Jesus steps up and says, Judge, can I have a moment? Yes, you may. This man or this woman, he calls you by name. Judge, everything that Satan just said, it's all true. Every bit of it. Every lie, every dirty thought, everything that they've done, the hatred that they have, everything that's against the Word of God, God, it, 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 judge, it's all true. And then he says, but judge, it's all. I pay the price. Judge, you can let her walk free. Judge, you can let him go free. Why? Because I died for him on the cross. I shed my blood for her on the cross, God. I paid that price. Everything he said is right. But the penalty. <laughs> Every last thing they did. I paid. spend the next few minutes talking to you about the blessing. God's covering 
Because I don't want you to miss this. My, my heart breaks. One of, the, one of the toughest things about being a pastor is to know what others are going through and you can't do anything about it. Hurt along the side of them. Just walk beside them. That's all you can do. You see, because this covering it's based upon our surrender to the Lord Jesus Christ. It's based upon us saying, Lord, I surrender, God. I, I want your covering. The, um the umbrella that I have this morning has all the colors similar to the rainbow. We see the rainbow when it comes up. The people post pictures and we talk about how pretty the rainbow is. And if you understand the significance of the rainbow, it's significantly in the importance of life. It signifies life. And the only life for you and I is to be under the covering of the Lord Jesus Christ. With that said, the blessings of God are conditional upon our obedience. The covering of God is conditional upon our surrender to Jesus Christ. Remember, we're guilty as charged. And if you're not under Jesus, you're headed to a sinner cell. I can't put it in any plan. Don't trust your religion. It ain't going to help you. It's only God. And the blessings of God are conditional to the obedience of us. And so I ask you this morning, do you really want the blessings of God? Do you, where you are this morning, do you desire the blessings of God? Let it be a reality check this morning. Because the blessings are based upon our obedience. That disobedience puts us outside that umbrella of blessing. We're not, we're not under the covering. We decide the blessings over here because we're disobedient, we're outside. And sometimes we move so far away that it's so hard to even hear the voice of God calling. I'm not talking about salvation now. I'm talking about the blessing of God. I'm talking about the blessing that comes as a result of the salvation. We're in the midst of tax season. If you cheat on your taxes, you're out from under the blessing of God. If you fudge on them, you're out from under the blessing of God. If you lie, if, if you cheat in school, if you don't do it the right way with integrity, you move out from under the blessing of God. And when we listen, when you endorse the disobedience of somebody else, guess what happened? You just got in bed with them. You just joined up with them. And you and I have to be careful that we don't bless the disobedience of somebody that affects our life. White lies, half truths, whole lies. It's still lies. I found myself even in recent months because of some situations that were going on. I said, God, what's the deal? God, if there's something I need to deal with in my own life, God, please show me what it is. Listen, folks, we need a reality check. We need, to, we need to check with the Lord. If we disobey the Lord, if we disobey the principles of God, and we put ourselves in a very vulcarious position, we, we put ourselves in a way that, that can cause damage to us, vulnerability. We give Satan an open door. Integrity and obedience has to be a, a priority in our life. The, the penalty for our sin was paid for on Calvary. That's the, the blood covering. But I want you to understand this morning, our actions, see somehow or another we fall into this thing, look, I'm a child of God. I'll do what I want to. No, no, no. Our actions have consequences. And when you and I make decisions against the will of God, there's going to be a con consequence that's contrary to the blessing of God. It's going to be. 
And we cannot, we cannot, we cannot. I don't care what society was doing. I had somebody say, everybody's doing it. The society, I don't care about that. You and I are going to give accountability to God. And you and I better stand as best we know how on the word of God and what does say the Lord really means and live our lives with total integrity to the best of our ability and power by the Holy Spirit of God. When we don't do that, it's a price to pay. You've got to understand that. The happiness that you're in right now will be temporary. Why do you say that, Pastor? Can you show me in the Word of God that backs up what you're saying? Here it is. What you sow will be what you need. I want you to understand. Think about what I just said. What we sow is what we will reap. We will. In Galatians, uh, chapter 6, verse 7, look what it says. I don't think I gave it to the girls. But it says, do not be deceived. God cannot be what walked. A man reaps what he sows. Listen to what it says. The one who sows to please his sinful nature. Listen, listen, listen. From that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. That's when he goes on to say, let us not become weary in doing good. For at the proper time we'll reap a harvest. Listen to me, just get it right. Just do what you gotta do to get it right with the Lord. Watch what God does. Why do we want to live in disobedience knowing that if we'll get right with God, then God's hand will be upon us? Why? 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 Why do we want to go there? Why do we want to stay there? It just doesn't make sense. It doesn't add up in the kingdom of God. Obedience must be a priority. It must become a daily habit. If you're a child of God, it must. Listen to the voice of God. Listen to the Holy Spirit as He speaks to us. In His book, and on the screen, there's a picture. I don't know how many times I'll play it, you'll see it. Of a drop of water. How many atoms would you think is in a drop of water? I mean, when you begin to just think about it, Probably say a thousand, somebody would, or a million. Somebody might even say a billion. I want you to look at that. I don't know if it'll play over and over, but if it does, it is. Because I want you to think about the blessing of God. Seeing one drop of water, if you take a straw, and you take that straw, you know how you put your finger and stick a straw in the glass, pull it out, and then ease it off and drop? Five, approximately greater than this, but five quintillion. Atoms are in that drop of water. You know, when you, when you begin to just think about some different things in our life, I mean, it, it's an amazing thing. When you think about molecules and, and what a molecule or how many, the number of molecules that are in a mole of substance, when we think about our life and how great our God is, 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd power, wherever how many that is. It's an amazing thing when you think about that. Well, why do you say all of that stuff, Pastor? Because that's the blessing of God. It's what God wants to do. One drop of obedience, one act of obedience leads to all of what God's doing in that ripple effect. That's all God asks. That's all God wants from you and I is to just be obedient. And watch what happens. Just like that drop falls and it begins to flow out. That's exactly the blessing of God when he drops and the multiple blessings. And you and I can't even begin to see that. It's where our faith comes in. It's where our trust comes in. We think about our complexity in our body that doctors can't even figure out, but God knows. And we think about what God really wants to do in the midst of that right there. Just one drop. And how it just flows out. See, the same is true with disobedience. 
Our one drop of disobedience begins to just ripple out and touch people all around us. And the choice, the choice is mine. The choice is yours, bless you. The choice is yours. Do you want to be what God wants you to be? Do you want to fulfill the desires? Do you want to be under the blessing of God? The umbrella of blessing. Or do we want to be, I can do it myself. Kind of wow, well, I hope it change, first of all, that you desire to come under the worship of Christ. And then you desire to say, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord, I, I can't. You got all the living. Get in love. Get in love.